Hello and welcome to the Hennepin Overland Railway Historical Society, located in southern Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hennepin Overland is an HO scale club of nearly 30 members with a nearly 2,000 square foot freestanding island type layout. Traffic control on our layout is done via automatic signal block detection and dispatch is handled via radio and track warrants. Hennepin Overland is currently located on East 38th Street in Minneapolis, where we have been since 1997, but the club itself actually goes back to the early 1970s with a loose group of friends hanging out in a local hobby shop. Officially, Hennepin Overland began in the mid-1970s in the basement of Hub Hobby on the north side of the Twin Cities. Our group was there until the fall of 1985, when it then moved to into scale model supplies in St. Paul. Part of our local presence is not only due to our decades spent with scale model supply, but also due to a handful of members in the past custom making several Hennepin Overland freight cars, which can be found on layouts around the Twin Cities today. Our tour guide train today will be a special Burlington Northern passenger train, starting us off at the westbound exit from our Helix. Cruising through the Y here, our train is now entering Centerville and Centerville Yard. The first thing to note as we pass Centerville is the arc furnace structure, which is part of our steel mill complex, presently under construction. Two tracks will allow us to access this area, which will wind around the entire complex and split into a five track yard in the back. One unique feature I've only ever seen here at Hennepin Overland is these contact points for our switches. You touch your finger to the contact to activate a servo and throw the switch. The first major landmark on our tour is Centerville. Centerville Yard serves as the main classification yard over the layout and also has one of our two major engine service facilities present. This facility is able to serve all sizes of steam engine as well as our diesels. In addition to the yard, Centerville also has several industries including an ice dock and a few warehouses as well as a gas dealer. Centerville also has access to a hidden three-track passenger train staging yard underneath the front of the layout. On the outskirts of Centerville, we'll pass another industrial park. These are mostly smaller warehouses and a freight depot. Our tour guide train is presently underneath the layout, so we'll bounce back up to the top really quick. This large yard here is actually intended to be a passenger terminal. Specifically, it's the St. Anthony Passenger Terminal, or better known as St. Paul Union Depot. That's exactly what ours is based off of, and what it will look like when it's finished. Now, if the name St. Anthony got your attention as a reference to Minneapolis, this next section may look a little bit familiar to you. Currently known as the Midtown Greenway, the Milwaukee Road cut a trench through Minneapolis to get its two main lines through the city. This part of the layout is very reminiscent of that. Up above our little trench section on the westbound end of the passenger depot, we have the town of Hastings. And we'll follow this daylight through Hastings just to show it off a little bit. Hastings itself does not have much going on railroad-wise. It's pretty much here just for scenic enjoyment, and that includes the interiors as well.
The next landmark on our tour is Trapper Junction. For those unaware of railroad terminology, the structure seen here is known as an interlocking tower, and its sole purpose is to watch over and control the tracks in front of it. After a dive through a tunnel, we arrive in the town of Wobegon. Wobegon itself is a busy little town, and we are able to interact with some of the industries here. We have a grain elevator that transloads grain from rail cars into barges. We have the GL Brosh Brewing Company, named after past member Gary Brosh, as well as Hawkins Chemical and the freight depots. The town also sits on a Y, and controls a reversing loop and a hidden switch which will allow us to get to the branch line scrapyard, which we'll show later. As our guide passes over the river, note the tracks in the canyon beside that river. Those are tracks leading from Wobegon to the eastbound main line. This is part of that reversing loop. With our club being as old as it is, some of the stuff that we have is just as old as the club, if not older. Perfect example is this mine structure built by local modeler Fred Holtzapfel just about 50 years ago for a convention at the time in Minneapolis. A favorite scenic highlight can be found beneath the mine as the tracks snake their way along this cliffside. As we near our trip to the Helix, the last scenic highlight for westbound trains is the elevated section. I personally have always equated this to Chicago's elevated railways, but most people seem to equate this to that crazy bridge in the movie Unstoppable. The third track that you see in the foreground is actually an eastbound passing siding. As we dive into the Helix, our tour guide train is on its way down to staging. Now, Hennepin Overland's Helix is pretty impressive out of its own right. As far as helixes go, it is the biggest that I know of. Between the east and west main lines and the branch line, that is a network of five tracks going up and down this thing with tracks everywhere at the top and bottom. As our train has reached the bottom of the main helix, we have entered staging. Staging is nothing much visually impressive to look at. It's entirely utilitarian. It serves only to be a big parking lot for us, but it does have two split level yards within it and another mini helix. And with our trek through the dungeon that is staging complete, we are back on the main helix, this time heading up spin to the top. So now the main line tour is complete, we'll switch over to the New Bergen line or the branch line, and for that we'll be following a Milwaukee Road freight train. Now like the beginning of the video, our first destination on this part of the tour is an interchange yard. This is Hennepin Yard. Uh, like Centerville, this is a flat switching yard, uh, and it is meant to handle traffic going in or out of the branch line. Also, like Centerville Yard, Hennepin Yard does have its own engine service facility, and it's actually the larger of the two. As we head out of the yard to the branch line, we will pass the switch lead track for working in the yard, as well as the locomotive idle track. Uh, from there, we go through a tunnel under this farm scene. Now, this farm scene is actually pretty unique because two of the fields we have modeled on this farm are actually made out of turf from the old Metrodome. Beyond the fields and cows, our train will pass the Miller's Lake Grain Elevator. Passing the Miller's Lake Whistle Stop, our train is heading to the junkyard. Now the junkyard actually serves as a junction for us. 
the far left track up against the retaining wall, that actually will take trains over around and under the layout over to Wobegon. Our train is now beginning its climb up the mountain branch line. I'd like to take the chance to give you a view through one of our access panels. We have several tracks in this particular tunnel. This is how we are able to reach them in case of problems. As our train climbs up the mountain line, a Chicago Northwestern freight train comes out of Wobegon down below. Passing beneath the summit sawmill, we're about halfway up the climb. We will now pass over a truss bridge over Wobegon one more time. Once over that final crossing over Wobegon, our train is on the final stretch to New Bergen. As our train enters New Bergen, the track you see on the right going under the bridge, that is the lead access to our coal mine. And you may also have noticed by now the catenary poles at our track side. That's for overhead electric wires. That's how electric locomotives get their power. Uh, we'll actually see one such electric locomotive. That would be my own little Joe sitting there in New Bergen. And just as with Hastings and Wobegon, New Bergen is definitely about that interior detail. Uh, fortunately, New Bergen is actually at eye level for most people, making these scenes much easier to see. New Bergen is also home to another past member reference, Digger's Garage. Uh, besides that, we also have a HO scale modeled version of our very own club building. Leaving New Bergen, our train will pass over that excellent stone arch bridge we saw earlier. Uh, now on our way to the Summit Sawmill area. Our branch line isn't explicitly supposed to be the Pacific Northwest, but uh, a lot of these trees definitely give it that feel. Most of the trees you're seeing are actually scratch built. Uh, looking over Summit Sawmill, uh, the sawmill here is actually a board lumber mill. Mostly completed, but presently undergoing some changes. Beside it is a three-stall engine facility, uh, also undergoing some changes. This was never actually completed. And like the other areas, the sawmill is home to some great interior detail. Here we are able to look right into the sawmill itself. Moving on from the lumber mill, our train will divert to the right and we will continue on the left because we still have some more to see. Now, anyone who's familiar with the layout from its scale model supply days is going to notice a big time change up on top of the helix. Uh, there used to be like a dispatcher post up there where you could look over the whole layout. We got rid of that somewhere during the move. Coming back over New Bergen, we come across maybe the most significant landmark on the Hennepin Overland layout. Uh, this is the Clothespin Canyon Trestle. Now this thing is truly impressive. Uh, this bridge, this trestle is just about six feet long, very elaborate. Every little piece of wood you're looking at has been hand cut. None of this, none of this scale model lumber was purchased. It was all made, stained, and applied. Truly spectacular work and proven to be award winning. Once over that fabulous trestle, we're in for a short climb up the mountain through this tunnel, and we are at the summit. Now up here, you'll notice there's tons, just tons of those handmade trees up here. Probably hundreds, we're not quite sure. 
Um, to give you a little perspective, this part of the layout is nearly six and a half feet up off the ground. I'm a pretty tall guy and I'm almost eye level with it. It's very high up off the ground. Now that will pose some interesting challenges for us to operate. Uh, even using the manhole in the middle, it's still going to require uh, some finagling to get at. But once we're able to operate it, it's sure to be uh, pretty spectacular. There's a lot of stuff going on up here. Now the last thing I would like to show you is the Hennepin Overland layout in the dark. Our layout is fully kitted out for running trains in the dark. Uh, trains after dark, trains at night, however you'd like to call it. Uh, we make a special event of this several nights during the winter months, around Christmas, around the holidays, and they have been very successful. People love coming in to see the layout in the dark like this. Of course, having all these lights in the buildings and whatnot is no small feat, and it does pay off. Now, that being said, we are at the end of the video. I want to thank you so very much for watching. We really appreciate it. Uh, it does mean a great deal to us to, to have the support that we have. Thank you very much for watching the video, and I definitely hope you've enjoyed the After Hours series thus far.